Finally, something different in resin 3D printing. This Frozen Sonic Mini prints twice as fast as other printers and it's only $200. The resin-based 3D printer market is absolutely saturated these days. Almost every manufacturer that you've heard of, and plenty that you haven't, have something on offer, so you might be struggling to choose between the different models. It doesn't help that for the most part, they're almost the same. Well today I have something different, the Frozen Sonic Mini. The official price is meant to be US $200, but that's not the point of difference. The point of difference is that it has a monochrome LCD. Regular LCD screens have red, green and blue elements which combine to light up and create a mask which a UV backlight then shines through to cure our resin. The UV light will degrade the LCD over time and therefore it will need replacement most printers around 500 hours. This monochrome LCD should have only one element. It means it's simpler and tougher and therefore is rated for over 2000 hours before it needs replacement. So it can clearly handle more UV. So if we turn up the power, it means we can cure our resin in much less time and that leads to much faster printing times, which is what this printer is so good at. I've been printing with around two and a half second layers compared to the typical eight or nine seconds per layer on other machines. That means the prints on this are roughly twice as fast. Sounds amazing on paper, so let's see how it actually went. This is the Frozen Sonic Mini. It's a monochrome resin 3D printer. The official price is 200 US dollars. However, on their own website, it goes for a little under 240. Perhaps it would actually be $200 on places like Amazon, but it seems to be currently unavailable. Like most of these resin 3D printers, it has a touchscreen for control and you can use frozen resins or any other that uses this wavelength. Like the frozen transform, it has a parallel matrix of LEDs and that distributes the UV light more evenly over the print area. The big thing about this printer, however, is its speed. With the right resin, you can get it all the way down to one second layer times. My printer was provided for review by 3D Printers Online. They have the printer currently in stock, so if you're from my part of the world, it makes sense to order it from them. They also stock the full range of frozen resins, as well as some other brands. Unboxing went smoothly, the printer arrived well packaged and with plenty of protective foam. The accessories box was on top and then the printer was coated in layers of plastic to keep the dust out. More internal foam kept the pieces from moving in transit and once this was gone I could inspect the resin vat which is translucent so you can see in the side but still has a metal retainer to hold down the FEP. The build platform has the usual four screws to aid with leveling and is held in place with a large single knob on top. As well as the usual tools and safety gear, there's a pretty decent manual that goes through the setup of the printer right up until your first print. When you power up the printer, the touchscreen comes to life with the frozen logo, followed by a straightforward and intuitive menu. All of the usual features are here, including an LCD screen test, which I recommend doing anytime you get a new resin printer. Here you can see the parallel LED matrix. To level the bed, we remove the two thumb screws and take off the vat, and then we loosen the four screws up the top of the build platform. We now follow the instructions from the Z calibration menu. The build plate will move down to the bottom onto the piece of paper you've put there. You tighten up the screws, hit OK, and it'll lift up ready to reinstall the vat. I took the time to clean the dust off the LCD as well as the underside of the vat before putting everything back into place, ready for my first prints in around 10 to 15 minutes. So we're off to a good start with the printer being well packaged and easy to get going. The software side is good too, using the free and powerful Chi2 box. When I started, however, I didn't have the correct resin profiles for this particular printer. So I had to do some trial and error, and as you'll see, it affected some of my prints. Let's have a look at how they turned out. First up were these sets of rings that were found on the USB drive. They printed quite flawlessly in frozen ABS like grey with lots of fine details and clarity. Next up I went for these moon cities but as you can tell they were a complete failure. I was guessing on the layer times and I didn't have it long enough so midway through the print it would delaminate and fail leading to me having to clean everything out. I tweaked the curing time per layer and then printed these bag tags for my daughter. Although the curing times were close enough to get it printed successfully, as you can see the text is mirrored, so I learnt that in the slicer I had to tick this box to get the prints to come out the correct way. 
Apart from that, I'm happy with the detail of the print, and the bonus is my daughter is too. Next, I tried two prints that would normally be done on an FDM printer. This print in place fidget toy looked pretty good until I removed all the support material and had a closer inspection. The support required for resin printers is different to FDM, and this one came pre-prepared, therefore the layers stuck together, and I don't think this thing will ever move like it's meant to. I also tried this flick out print in place dagger, but as you can see, nothing is coming out. I had the initial layer curing times just a little bit too long, that created an effect similar to elephant foot, and unfortunately, despite snipping them away, they're all still fused just enough inside that they don't release. I next decided to push the printer with some detailed printing, and I printed this model Necrolord. It still had the slight elephant foot, but apart from that, I was pretty happy with the detail. Best of all, on the large, gently curving surfaces, I couldn't see any voxel banding. I scaled things way down with this mini lattice torture cube, and it seemed to come out perfectly, telling me that I had the resin profile pretty close, so I was pretty surprised when I had a delaminated failure on my next print. Thinking it was time to change resin to something else, I then discovered that I'd spilt some resin and it got in between the FEP and the LCD screen. This is potentially game over for any printer, but fortunately it was thin and it flaked off. After that, I was able to give the LCD a good clean and got the printer back and working. I reprinted the same files, but this time in frozen aqua green. All of the small components are nicely formed. I'd have no doubt you'll be able to put this thing together in whatever configuration you choose, with the final result looking really good. I thought I would slice and print some jewelry I found online to really see how fine this thing could go. This skull pendant and this dandelion ring have some quite delicate sections, and all of the geometry seems to have been produced correctly. This dandelion ring is particularly impressive to look at. Keeping on the decorative theme, I then printed this skull. I used T2 box to hollow and then add drainage holes on the underside, and that saved a bit of resin. The final result, once again, all of the features fully formed, with plenty of detail and no artifacts that I can see. My final print was this wolf cub. It turned out pretty good as well, but it's hard to tell because I was experimenting with washing the print with another type of cleaner, and as you can see, it didn't really do a good job, with a thin layer of resin curing to the top and leaving it quite shiny. That's my printing over, time for a summary. I'm definitely happy with this printer. It's got a lot of pros and only two cons that I can think of. This printer is easy to use with a clear and intuitive LCD touchscreen. The build platform is the same size as other printers, and that means it's compatible with machines like the Anycubic Wash and Cure station that I just reviewed. T2 Box as a slicer is free and it's pretty easy to use and has a lot of community support. Compared to other printers, it's quiet. Right now it's sitting here on, and that's because the cooling fans only come on when you're actually printing. Like the Frozen Transform that I also recently reviewed, replacement parts like extra vats are available, as well as the replacement LCD for when the time does eventually come to replace it. This printer is not only compatible with the very good Frozen resins, but also any other resins that use the typical 405 nanometer wavelength. And that brings me to the downsides. Firstly, the build volume height is 20 millimeters less than typical for this style of printer, being 130 instead of 150. Secondly, the LCD is only 1080p instead of 2K. Technically, it is capable of less detail than a 2K screen, but I haven't mentioned this yet because I want you to judge the results you're seeing rather than the specs. For me, the main selling point is the increased speed, and in my opinion, it's a game changer, eliminating one of the main problems with resin 3D printing. Without buying this printer, if you want to compare speeds between it and other printers, download Cheetobox for free, load up the Frozen Sonic Mini as well as something like an Anycubic Photon, do some slicing and look at the predicted times. I found Cheetobox is within 5% of being accurate. For example, this Wolf Cub is around 4 hours faster than an equivalent size printer, and with some fast curing resin, this thing could be even more rapid. I've tested a few cheap resin 3D printers lately, but this is the one I'm going to be sticking with. I'm going to buy some more vats and I'm going to test some different types of resin, such as the Rock Black Stiff for an engineering project and the Wax Like for a metal casting project. Those will be coming up in future, but in the meantime, I'd love to read about your thoughts on this printer in the comments down below. Thank you so much for watching, and until next time, happy resin 3D printing. G'day, it's Michael again. If you like the video, then please click like. If you want to see more content like this in future, click subscribe and make sure you click on the bell to receive every notification. If you really want to support the channel and see exclusive content, become a patron. Visit my Patreon page. See you next time.